So once we've gone through the discovery and we've got these assessments, you know, we've got data, we, we understand what your services are doing, what the, how they're configured, what they look like. We've identified potentially a, a target state. So actually I want to, to work in a more agile manner. I want to induce scalability. I want to make sure they're more secure. You know, these are all things that I need to aim towards with that North Star vision and the, the horizon shift here will help me identify that. I can then start looking at workloads and looking at what they look like in Azure. So I can say, look, this this file server I've got, yeah, it's got a big disk attached to it. Do I move that to Azure as it is? Well, probably not. What what benefits am I going to get from moving the, the, the server with a you know, large amount of disk attached to it as is? Well, it's going to be quite quick. You know, I have to wait for the data. I don't have to worry about permissionings. It's going to be you know, quick and easy. You know, but if I move that to maybe Azure files or even translate that into SharePoint for you know, some of the, the file services, you know, is that a better way? Is that helping my business achieve that longer term vision of scalability and security? Well, SharePoint, yes, because you know, I, I'm not worrying about the, the presentation of, of the file services. I can enforce policies. I can put AIP in, in front of that and DRM management. I can make sure it's all authenticated with Active Directory. I can enforce privileged identity management and conditional access. So suddenly you can start thinking, well, yeah, if I put that on a file server, I can't get some of them benefits and I have to worry about patching an operating system and worrying about replication groups. So in fact, what I might do is I want to re-architect that into SharePoint or I want to re-architect that or refactor that into Azure files. So allowing you, you to understand that target state in line with the mechanisms that we can employ for the, the categorization and rationalization of these services really does help us really identify that that target state and the, the migration mechanisms we're going to need to use. Go to the next one then. It's a bit of an explanation about the different five R's. So just making sure we, we have a common vocabulary at this point. So rehosting, maybe you've heard of lift and shift. It's you know it's that kind of component. We're moving the workload in its current state to the cloud. You know, that there's there's minimal um, reconfiguration, you know, there's always going to be some element of of VIPing and you know, DNS changes and stripping out maybe agents and things like that. But you know, there's minimal effort for the workload to to operate in its current state into Azure. Um, refactoring, rearchitecting, rebuilding are all elements of change. So we, we're enforcing change on the application and the construct of the application. So making, you know, changing the code to fit with a PaaS model or changing the app application construct entirely to become more cloud native or starting again. We might say, actually, if I move this to Azure in its current format, it's very hard for me to get any value from, from its current configuration. What I need to do is I need to rebuild it from scratch. I need to start building it from in, in a cloud native fashion from the beginning. You know, that's a very good way of looking at a, a migration strategy for some workloads. And then ultimately replace is, well, do I need this workload in Azure or can I just buy this as a SaaS offering where I just pay for a license and access maybe a web portal, some, some, something like Sage Online. Well, why am I managing a massive Sage database and, and server infrastructure when I can just move to Sage Online and, and can let them worry about that and just pay for users um, and entitlements to, to certain features? Obviously, the, it's not that simplistic because you know, there might be embedded business process and features that you know, have been deprecated and not supported in, in other versions. But from a concept, it's like, well, if I can buy things off the shelf easily in a in an OPEX model, then yeah, you know, that should be my strategy. It's going to help me deliver an agile, more coherent IT function going forward. So, yeah, you know, these five R's are very important to help align that target end state to um, what you're trying to achieve. Um, Microsoft also helps with um, making some of these decisions as well. So, uh, you Google, um, going to the Microsoft um, documentation. There's these. There's a few decision trees. So. Um, it will step you through a few decisions you need to make. Obviously, this is, this is quite a simplistic view of things, but yeah, it, it does allow you to to identify where the target state should be aligned to the migration strategy. So, from the example here, you, you've got a line of business applications. You straight away you can look. Well, if I'm going to move that to Azure, how am I going to move that? Have I got bandwidth? constraints is there a large amount of data I might have to precede that with maybe a, a, a data box transfer if there's a big data box a database there or a large amount of the data that I'm moving maybe it's not achievable doing it over an internet connection yeah maybe there's constraint and bandwidth constraints there 
or maybe you know, I don't want to, even though it's encrypted in transit, you know, maybe I want to make sure that you know I have my own encryption on top of it if it's you know sensitive information, um, and therefore I, I want to use a dedicated storage appliance for that. Then yeah, you know, I can make that decision at this point. Looking at modernising the data and apps, you know, do I need a dedicated VM? If I'm only looking at modernising it, you know, what options do I have at my disposal there? Looking at the the data platform. You know, th there's a few decisions there, but ultimately it's going to lead you to looking at the, the column on the right there of how you're able to deploy an application. So from this line of business application, you've got at the bottom, you know, I've deployed VMs with SQL, I've deployed VMs with IIS or, or other web components on there. So that's very much a lift and shift. That's very much a rehosting element. You know, in some of the top ones, we're looking at, well, actually I've consumed a platform service from, from SQL. You know, I'm using SQL databases um, from Azure. And I'm using web app service plans. So you know, I've modernized um, the delivery of that. I'm delivering that via DevOps pipelines. Um, I, I've refactored that to make sure that I'm getting all the benefits from uh, a cloud adoption into Azure. Fantastic. You know, and it doesn't stop there. You can see on the right there, there's always future innovation potential that's going to help you um, refactor and modernize the application as you go forward. So just because we had to lift and shift now, or we had to do things in a certain way, maybe there's an element of technical debt or maybe there's a, a license constraint that we've got that will be released maybe a year, two years later. Well, then let's look at the the, the, the continued innovation of that going forward um, to, to make sure that you realise the, the, the benefits from the cloud adoption at that point.